Hey guys, it's Corey B. I'm going to make another classic Nintendo hacking video. If you follow me from about a year ago, that's when I started hacking the Super Nintendo Classic. Um, it's super easy to hack. I didn't invent any of this hacking. All I did was follow the directions. I bought this NES Classic in the summer and I hadn't even opened it up yet actually. I just now saw in the news articles that they're not making these anymore. They're stopping production. If you get the opportunity to get one of these, go and get it right away. Um, because not only are they loads of fun, but they're super easy to hack and add all the games that you want to add to them. So let's open this up and I'm going to try to run the exact same uh, hacking methods as I did with the Super Nintendo Classic on the NES Classic. Um, I hope it's that easy. So you get some paperwork here and I think there's like a Nintendo poster inside. You get this cute tiny little NES Classic here. Um, I actually like the style of this a little bit more than the Super Nintendo Classic. I really hated that the controller ports were behind this little flap on the Super NES Classic and it doesn't like open up or snap open. You kind of have to pry it open and then it kind of dangles there and you clip it in and you can't even plug the controllers into it. Um, really nice sleek design. The buttons on the front here work. Uh, very cool. You've got the two controller plugs right there. You got an HDMI and then the uh, USB on the back which we're going to use to hack it. Now I remember when this came out and I went over to a buddy's house to play it and he only had the one controller and we had to keep swapping the controller back and forth and it was a real pain. Um, so that's great that they threw two controllers in with the Super Nintendo. Um, just like the PlayStation that just came out. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are following the PlayStation Classic. I just ordered mine because I found out that it's as easy to hack or easier than the Super Nintendo and the Nintendo. So here you go. You get an HDMI, you get a USB with the power brick here, you get one controller. Um, I hope that I can just plug in my Super Nintendo controller here and use it with it. I don't know, let's fire it up right now and find out. Well, I switched the Super Nintendo controller over to the first port and it is working just fine. So that is awesome. That. I'm going to be able to use the Super Nintendo controller um, in place of a second NES controller. So not a bad little machine so far. I would buy this uh, as a standalone machine just with the 30 games on it. Even if I couldn't hack it, um, I'm loving it so far. It's very responsive. Um, it's a great emulator, uh, so now let's find out if we can hack it. I'm going to take this over to my computer now and I'm going to use the same exact uh, hacking methods as I did a year ago for the Super Nintendo Classic. Um, so let's see, if it, let's see if it works. All right, I'm over at my computer now. I downloaded the new ver version of Hatchkey. Is that how you say it? Hatchkey? It's spelled H-A-K-C-H-I and the new version is 2.31. Um, and just like last year when I plugged this in, we're going to have to dump the kernel first. Uh, dumping the kernel pretty much means we're going to back up the original what's on here. Um, in case we mess it up too bad or we want to go back to our original image, we can do that with the kernel as long as we back it up. Um, but also what I'm going to do is I'm going to email the kernel to myself in an email just so that I have it. So in case my computer crashes, goes down, I'll, I'll have that original image here. Also, when you're plugging this into your computer, one thing that I found out last year when I was doing this with the Super Nintendo was um, don't plug this into a hub. Um, what, what we're doing here, you see we got no HDMI here, we got no controllers, we just got the ori original USB Nintendo um, cable here, and I'm going to plug it directly into the computer, not into a USB hub. Last year the USB hub didn't have enough power. And it says no driver found. That's fine. So we're going to run Hatchkey. Hack, Hackchi, Hackchi. And we're going to go to the kernel first and we're going to dump the kernel. Do you want to dump the kernel? Yes. Uh, and then it's going to tell us this is the same exact um, 
Thing and Total Slash here with the Super NES. Um, there's three steps here. <clears throat> Number one, make sure the power button on your NES, SNEF, S Mini is switched off. So we're going to turn that off. Mm -hmm. Then it says, number two, reconnect your NES, SNES Mini to the PC via the USB cable. So I'm going to unplug it, and I'm going to plug it back in. Number three, hold the reset button down, and then turn on the power. So I'm going to hold the reset button, turn on the power, and the power button does not light up when you do this. And then number four, it says, after a few seconds, release the reset button, the power LED should not be on. We'll let go, and then it oh, and then it just takes over, and and now it's showing up down here as my device is an NES Mini, and it looks like it's dumping the kernel right away. So this is great. This is uh, just as easy as last year, if not easier, because we've done it already. And it says your original kernel is saved. Cool. Do not lose it. That's why I said email it to yourself. Oh, here we go. I found some. So I'm going to just start by throwing NES ROMs on here. All right, that looks like enough games to play around with. Um, so next thing I'm going to do is on each one of the games that I dropped onto there, I'm going to, on the box art, because it doesn't look very good, I'm just going to hit Browse. Oh, that's not what I want. I'm on Google, sorry. Hit Google. And it's just going to Google... Um, NES 1943 Battle of Midway. I want to pick the first one. Uh, I think it looks good. I'm going to go through and I'm going to pick this. I'm going to pick some art for each one of them here. There we go. We've got album art picked out for all of them. I'm not going to get into the folders and the folder art yet and sorting them. I'll get that into that in the other videos that I'm going to make here. Um, but right now, this is a really great start uh, to hacking this. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit synchronize selected games with NES slash SNES Mini. We're doing it with the NES Mini right now, but obviously the software works on both. Um, so you need to flash the custom kernel to your SNES Mini. This is only required once. Do you want to continue? And hit yes. Flashing the kernel does take quite a bit of time. Um, way longer than uploading the very, very small games. Um, that whole time we were updating the kernel and then right at the end it said you can now upload your games and that took like two seconds, maybe not even, and now it says done. And if you look right down here, the total file size that we have to use on this NES Classic is 322 megabytes and we're only using 4.2 megabytes. Um, so you can, I've, I've seen some people say they can put like 800 games on this. That would not surprise me at all. So it looks like everything works now. I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to unplug it and we're going to go back over to the projector. So one thing that was really terrible about the original NES Classic that they kind of fixed on the Super NES um, is the controller situation. So I already told you it comes with one controller, the Super NES uh, Classic comes with two controllers, so that's great. But also, look at the lengths of these. Here, I have both of the ends of them together, and there is the Classic controller, and the Super Classic controller has this much more controller cable. Um, that was definitely a problem. They sold a lot of extenders. Here we are. Now here are the games that I had. So we've got uh, 1943, Battle of Midway, Air Fortress, Air Wolf, Alien 3. I just want to make sure that this Super Nintendo controller works and it looks like it does. Now one other question that I've got on my videos is does the Wii Classic controller work? And I believe that I've tested it and it did not, but we're gonna test that again right now just to demonstrate. Came out for the Wii. 
when they started selling classic downloadable games and the controller has the same exact hookup as this system. Oh my word, it works. Oh, shit. I am almost 100% sure this did not work on the Super Nintendo Classic. And that is really cool because this has a great feel to it. This controller feels so awesome. And it's got analog thumbsticks here. So, right away I'm really excited for this for a couple reasons. One, it hacks just as easy as the Super Nintendo one. Um, two, you can use the Super Nintendo controllers with it, which gives you a longer cable. Number three, you can use this Wii Classic controller with it, which I could not get to work on my Super Nintendo Classic, but it works on this one just fine. Maybe it's an update and the Hackchi program. Um, number three, everybody's got ROMs laying around. You can throw it up. Did I said three already? Yeah, probably. And finally, um, not only, like I said, I would have bought this just for the 30 games that came on it because there's some great games, um, but on top of it, you can add your own games to it. Um, I'll be making more videos about this hopefully soon in the future. I'll show you just like on the Super Nintendo, how you change your folders, how you can change your album art, um, change a lot of the settings on this and play other consoles on it because besides just the NES and the Super NES. And then also, um, coming in the mail is my PlayStation Classic. Uh, I just bought that two days ago. And hopefully that's going to be just as easy to hack when it shows up. And I'll make another video about that. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. And sorry it took me so long to get out more retro video game content. But as always, if you're here for the drones, please don't go away. Um, I'll be flying drones once the sun comes up, probably. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.